Leah's daughter Dinah is disgraced. Genesis chapter 34, 1900 BC, estimated, 182nd year of the covenant of the torch. Isaac's age 166, Jacob's age 106, Joseph's age 16. By God's providence, Jacob returned to the land of Canaan after 20 years. He dwelt in the city of Shechem, camping before the city. He bought the land where he pitched his tent for 100 pieces of silver. Jacob remembered God's promise to Abraham when he passed through the land of Shechem. God said, To your descendants I will give this land. Genesis chapter 12 verse 7. Jacob probably bought the land as a guarantee that the Israelites would possess this land rooted in God's promise. Jacob experienced many unfortunate events while he was Duolino in Shechem. Dinah. His only daughter was disgraced and humiliated by the son of Hamer the Hivite who raped her. Genesis chapter 34 verse 1 Given the fact that Hamer had suggested marriage, Dinah must have been around 16 years of age. Genesis chapter 34 verse 8 Simeon and Levi, along with the other sons of Jacob, became enraged at how their sister had been defiled. They deceitfully proposed to Hamer and his son that the Israelites would allow intermarriage with them as long as all the Hivite men are circumcised. While the Hivite men were incapacitated from the pain of circumcision, Simeon and Levi took their swords and killed every male. Genesis chapter 34 verse 24 Why did such disgrace fall upon Jacob? Jacob had not kept his oath to God. After the vision of the latter he saw in Bethel while he was fleeing from Esau, he vowed that if God allowed him to return safely to before God, Canaan, he would return to Bethel and build an altar of thanksgiving before God. Genesis chapter 28 verse 20 Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me on this journey that I take, and will give me food to eat and garments to wear, and I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone, which I have set up as a pillow, will be God's house. And of all that thou dost give me, I will surely give a tenth to thee. Jacob should have kept his vow and returned to Bethel soon after bought the land in Shechem. Nevertheless, he became oblivious about his vow and stayed in Shechem for about ten years since he had returned to Canaan from Padan Aram. All the tragic and unfortunate events that Jacob experienced in Shechem were a result of his negligence and unfaithfulness in keeping his vow. God appeared to Jacob after Dinah had been disgraced and after his sons had shed the blood of revenge. God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and live there, and make an altar there to God. Who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau? Genesis chapter 35 verse 1 Jacob obeyed God's command and built an altar for the Lord in Bethel and named the place El Bethel. Genesis chapter 35 verse 6 God's persistence in making Jacob keep his vow and establishing Jacob as a worthy successor to the covenant was part of his plan of salvation. Birth of Benjamin and Death of Rachel, Genesis chapter 35 verse 16, Reunion with Isaac, Genesis chapter 35 verse 27, 1900 BC, estimated, 182nd year of the covenant of the torch. Isaac's age 166, Jacob's age 106. Joseph's age 16, after the Dinah episode, Jacob arrived at Bethel and built an altar there. Then, he departed from Bethel again and journeyed toward Ephrath, Genesis chapter 35 verse 15. Rachel had dearly longed for a second son after Joseph was born, Genesis chapter 30 verse 24. Her wish was fulfilled when she gave birth to Benjamin on the way to Ephrath, but she died after a hard labor. Her hard labor was presumably due to the fact that it was in the middle of a journey and she was 16 years older than when she had Joseph. These factors could have contributed to her death. Rachel was buried on the way to Ephrath, Bethlehem, and Jacob set up a pillar over her grave. Genesis chapter 35 verse 19 Even before Jacob could be consoled after losing his most beloved wife as he journeyed from Ephrath and pitched his tent beyond the Tower of Adar, 
He heard that his son Reuben had relations with Bilhah, his concubine. Genesis chapter 35 verse 21 After leaving Laban's house, Jacob dwelt in the land of Shechem. Genesis chapter 33 verse 18 and passed through Bethel and Ephrath. It took him about ten years since he left Laban's house until he finally arrived in Hebron where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt together. Genesis chapter 35 verse 27 He had an emotional reunion with his father, Isaac, after about thirty years since he had fled from Esau to Padan Aram. Genesis chapter 28 the 30 years is the sum of the 20 years of his stay at his uncle Laban's house and about 10 years of his stay Shechem after his departure from Laban's house by Isaac was now about 166 years old. And Jacob was 106 years old, so it is estimated that Jacob lived 14 more years with Isaac until Isaac died. Joseph was 16 years old when Jacob returned to Hebron and reunited with Isaac. This was not long after Joseph lost his mother, Rachel. After this, at the age of 17, Joseph was sold into slavery in Egypt as a result of his brother's jealousy. Thus, he spent about one year with his grandfather Isaac. Joseph was probably greatly influenced by Isaac during this year. One year was a short period of time but it was the precious time needed to inherit the covenant and deeply establish the root and foundation for his faith. The author of this content is Reverend Abraham Park. Reverend Abraham Park was an acclaimed world-class theologian with remarkable pastoral spirituality. He had dedicated his entire life to prayer and the scriptures, having read the Bible over 1,800 times. Throughout his lifetime ministry, he was a true pastor who loved the church and the congregation like his own children. His daily schedule consisted of two-hour prayers and three-hour Bible readings, as well as continual preaching and evangelizing. With conviction that, to die is to live, he prayed deep in the mountains for more than three years. When the sun set, he did nothing but pray, when the sun rose, he did nothing but read the Bible. Then, finally, a single ray of grace shone upon him. Through the powerful illumination of the Holy Spirit and by the grace of God, the scenes in the Bible unfolded like a panorama before his eyes. These scenes were written down on large arrowroot leaves which were bound with a twig. They were later transcribed onto paper bought from a village under the mountain every few months. This is how the Reverend Abraham Park's sermons began. Many people are impressed by the Reverend Abraham Park as follows. How can a person love so many people? How can a person make such a big impact to so many people? He is so hard working, never rest. He never ceased to pray. He deserves to be truly honored for his dedication for the church and the congregations. A true and faithful worker of God. This concludes today's message. Thank you very much. God bless you. I wish you have a good day.